The manner in which you communicate depends on a number of factors. Who is your audience? What expectations do they have for the method and frequency of communications? What is the nature of your message? The answers to these questions will help you determine the method of communication that is best suited to your situation. Meetings are a method of interactive communication where you gather a group of people, either virtually or in the same room. Meetings are appropriate when decisions must be made and when participation and collaboration is required. Meetings are an excellent way to kick off a project and to get the buy-in and support you need from stakeholders. They are also an effective way to wrap up project work, share lessons learned, and establish agreement that the project is finished. In some cases, it may be appropriate to hold impromptu meetings, especially if decisions must be made quickly. A virtual meeting may consist of a video conference where individuals can both see and hear each other. If that is not possible, a voice conference or phone call can also allow for interaction between parties. Note that as you rely more and more on virtual communication, you may see an increase in both technical difficulties and miscommunication. It is important to use active listening techniques, clarify communication, and document minutes in order to minimize misunderstandings. There are additional forms of interactive communication that may not require real-time interaction. Email, faxes, texting, and instant messaging allow for the exchange of information but do not require all parties to be present at the same time. This allows for schedule flexibility and also provides a written record of the interaction. Text messages or instant messaging may be used for less formal interaction, while emails and faxes can be used if you would like to maintain a formal record or for longer messages or attachments. As social media continues to grow, parties exchange their messages in a more public forum. Without the need of face-to-face -face meetings, social media allows the customer or stakeholder to drive the conversation and to interact with and influence company communications and decisions. Finally, organizations may choose to distribute information to stakeholders and customers in a one-way communication. If communication is only intended to be informational and doesn't require a response, then using printed media or mass email correspondence may be the preferred method of communication. Communication methods are the ways in which information is shared among project stakeholders. There are basically three classifications of communication methods, interactive, push, and pull. Interactive communication involves an exchange of information between two or more people. This multidirectional method of communication is considered to be the most efficient way to make sure all parties achieve a common understanding of what's communicated. Interactive methods of communication include meetings, telephone calls, and video conferencing. In push communication, information is sent to specific recipients who need it. This method ensures the information is distributed, but doesn't guarantee that it was received or understood by the recipients. Push methods include letters, memos, reports, emails, faxes, voicemails, and press releases. The poll communication method is used for large volumes of information or for very large audiences. Recipients access the communication content at their own discretion. As such, you won't know if the information has been accessed or if it's been understood. Methods of poll communication include intranet sites, e-learning resources, project websites, and knowledge bases. Information can be shared through various platforms. These include portals, information portals, or secured web pages. Depending on the sensitivity of the information, sharing can be internal through wiki pages or through communities of interest, internal or external to the organization. Specific requests can also trigger sharing. Recommendations are often incorporated into formal training sessions or informal sessions during lunch called lunch and learn or brown bag training sessions. All or portions can be included in internal newsletters or more formal publications for external audiences. Specific items may be discussed as part of team meetings or in one-on-one -on -one meetings, especially if 
things didn't go well. Catherine, the project manager working to perform an environmental cleanup project, is planning which methods will be used to share information on her project. First, she considers the communication needs of Jared, the environmental technician. He'll need interactive communication with herself and with regulatory enforcement agents. She plans for them to be able to communicate in person and via telephone. Next, she defines how members of the executive team will receive status reports. According to the communication requirements analysis, weekly reports are necessary. She plans to have the weekly reports emailed to the specific stakeholders. This will be efficient and stakeholders can choose when to review it. This is an example of push communication. Catherine also sees in the communications requirements analysis that Jarrett will require access to high-definition photos of the cleanup site. Since the file size of the images will be large, she plans to store the images on an FTP site so Jarrett can access them as he needs to. This is an example of poll communication. Focus on providing only the information stakeholders will need to make informed decisions about the project. Providing more information than is necessary can cause confusion, lead to unpredictive actions, and generally be a waste of time. Too much information can also lead to frustration and doubt or misunderstandings, which in turn can lead to a loss of project support. It's important to allocate sufficient resources to communication activities because without them, you may not be able to satisfy the communication requirements of the project and its stakeholders. Every project is different, so you'll have to carefully consider the resource needs every time you undertake a project. In summary, your communications should consider your audience and their expectations, the nature of your message, and providing only the information needed.